So in this question, we have a copper pipe with an outer diameter of 40 millimeters and an inner diameter of 37 millimeters, and it's tightly secured to the wall here at A. We also have three torques applied to it, and we need to determine the absolute maximum shear stress that's developed in this pipe. So to start off with, we can think about the equation that we're going to want to apply, and it's going to be the equation for shear stress. So shear stress is tau, and we should be able to calculate it with TR over J. Okay, so tau is the torque that's going to be applied, R is the uh, distance from the centroid, and J is a parameter associated with the cross section of our shaft. So we're not just interested in any um, shear stress, we're interested in the worst case or the maximum shear stress. So I'm going to call it our tau max. And in order to maximize the left-hand side, we want to maximize what's on the top uh, line of the other side of the equation. So that means we're looking for the maximum torque that we have and also the maximum distance that we can get away from the centroid. And technically, we would want to minimize J on the bottom line here in order to maximize what's on the left-hand side. But since we've got a consistent cross-section all the way through our beam, um, basically J is going to be a constant. So we're going to need to go through and figure out these three um, properties. Uh, T max is going to come from looking at the torques applied through our um, shaft. And these other two properties are going to come from looking at the cross section. So let's start with getting out our maximum torque. And I'm going to start that by drawing ourselves a, a free body diagram. So I'm going to draw this as a free body diagram which means I'm going to separate the shaft from the wall. Okay, so I'm going to assume the wall is here. So let's label that A. So using our right hand rule, let's say that I am measuring um, X in this direction. If I put my thumb in the direction of the X axis, and I'm talking about my right hand here, so my right thumb in the direction of that axis, all right, and the direction my fingers point is going to be the positive direction. So when I convert this onto my free body diagram, I'm going to use like the double arrows to represent it as a torque. And I would say this is going in the positive direction. So it will be um, to the right. Okay. So this is going to be 80 Newton meters. The next one that we have here, if I apply the right hand rule, okay, pointing my uh, thumb in the, this direction here along the axis on my right hand, I'm going to say that this one is in the negative direction or the opposite direction to the other one. So it's going to be pointing back the other way. Again, I've got a double arrow here to represent it as a torque rather than a force. And if we do it for this one here, I'm going to find that it's in the positive direction. So this will be 30 Newton meters. Now, at the support here, I've separated from the wall, and we're going to have a reaction torque, okay? And I'm going to call that um, T support, or T sup. Now, I need to make a guess as to what the direction is. I'm going to guess it back to the left here, because um, all of these are going to have to end up adding to give zero in terms of the total. So let's do that. So sum of torques have to be equal to zero as long as this uh, shaft is not moving, okay, and it isn't in this case. So that means that we're going to have 80 in the positive direction. We've got 20 in the negative, uh, 30 in the positive, and then I've drawn this assuming in the negative direction. So if I solve for this, I'm going to get, uh, this is 60 plus 30, so 90 over all. So that means that my support um, torque or torque at the support is going to be 90 um, Newton meters and it's come out positive which means I did correctly assume the direction of this. All right so 90 Newton meters on the end there. Now what we want to find out is the maximum torque that's experienced through this shaft and there's two ways of doing it. So one way of doing it is to take cuts through your uh, shaft um, for each of the different sections. Now this is a little bit long-winded because you can see here we've essentially got a change in loading through, um, we're going to have to section it up into three different parts. Okay, Each time we move along and there's a change in the load, we need to create a new section. So you'd have to perform three cuts in this particular case. The other option that you have is to draw a torque diagram, which is very similar to drawing a shear force diagram. So the difference is a torque diagram, you're looking at torques. 
Um, for a shear force diagram, you're looking at shear forces. So let's have a look at drawing a torque diagram. So scrolling down here, so I'm going to draw this diagram TD and I'm going to use the units of Newton meters and we set it up just the same as the other diagrams. So this is going to be our axis where we measure from. So at the beginning we are going to start at zero and we see that immediately we have a torque of 80 newton uh, meters and this is in our positive um, direction that we're assuming for the torques. So therefore it's going to go up. There's no torque applied through here so it's just going to remain flat and then we hit this one which is 20 and it's in the negative direction so it's going to push us down 20 which means that we're going to go to 60 overall. So we keep going along here and there's no torque applied until we hit this one, which is 30 newton meters in the positive direction. So it's going to push us back up to 90. And then we keep moving along, nothing happening until we reach the end. And we can see we've got this torque in the negative direction. So it's going to push us back down. And we were at 90, we're taking 90 off, so we're going to end the diagram at zero, which is good. We should be starting and ending at zero each time. So I'm just going to color this in. And that becomes our torque diagram. Now all we want to read off this is the maximum value that we can get. And I should mention it doesn't matter whether we're on the positive or the negative side of the diagram. We just want the absolute maximum. Now for this case, obviously everything's on the top. So that doesn't really matter too much. So I think the maximum we can get here is going to be the 90. So I'm going to mark that in. It's our T max. And the units are Newton meters that we've done this in. So just as a quick side note, I'm going to show you how you could verify this result um, of 90 using a cut through this top section here. So if I do that to the side, we're going to cut between, let's give it a name, let's call this point where this 30 newton meters is applied B. So we're going to cut between the points A and B. So when we do that, I'm right, going to slice through here, we can choose to take either the left or the right hand side. I'm going to choose to take the left because that makes our sign convention easy, right? Because we're measured x from the left hand side. If we take the left, um, it should end up with the same sign as what we end up down here. So, carrying everything across on the left of this cut, we have the 80, we have the 20, and we have the 30. And then at the cut point, we need to replace it with the internal torque, okay? So I'm going to guess it's going this way, and I'm going to call it TAB for the internal torque. So if we sum torques on this, they have to be equal to zero because it's an equilibrium. And we're going to get 80 minus 20 plus 30 minus the TAB is equal to zero. And if you solve this, you're going to find out that TAB is equal to 90 Newton meters. Okay, and that's exactly the same as what we ended up with on this diagram. Now you would be able to go through and apply this process again for these other sections. So between the 20 and the 30 and between the 80 and the 20. All right, but you should um, just be verifying that you get the same result as what's on the torque diagram. So if you're given the option, um, torque diagrams are going to be generally easier than going through this cut method. All right, so moving on from that side note, all right, what we're trying to do is fill out this equation for the maximum shear stress. So the next thing I need to find is the R max and the J, and we said that these come from the cross section of our pipe. And we can see our pipe here, it's a hollow internal one, and we're told we have an outer diameter of 40 and an inner diameter of 37. So let's go and draw that down here. All right, so it's gonna be a circle with another one inside, so this is the solid part. If we label the dimensions, we said the outer diameter was 40 millimeters, and the inner one here is 37. I'll pop that off to the side. So we can easily identify the centroid of this shape. It's gonna be at the center um, of it. So I'll put a little C on here. And let's go for our max to begin with. So this is the maximum distance we can get away from the centroid um, while still sitting on the uh, actual cross section. 
So I would suggest that the furthest that we can get away from this is going to be when we hit the outer um, edge of our cross section. Now since we have a diameter of 40, this kind of corresponds to the outer radius, so that would be um, 20 millimeters. Okay, so that's going to be our, our max that we substitute into the equation. So the other one that we needed was the J value, and this is our polar moment of inertia. And there are um, tables that we can look uh, up the equations for this um, based on what our cross section actually looks like. So for a hollow um, cylinder, the equation that we can use is pi on 2 RO to the 4 minus RI to the 4. Okay, so all we've got to do now is substitute in for it. So RO is our outer radius, okay, and we've just said that's 20 millimeters. Um, I'm going to put this into meters, so it's going to be 0 0.02 to the 4, and I've just realized I popped that in wrong. It should have been 4 on the inside here. Um, and then minus, we've got the internal radius that we need to substitute in. So if it's 37 uh, millimeters for the diameter, then the radius is going to be half of that, which I think is 18.5 millimeters, or in meters, it would be 0 0.015, okay? And that gets raised to the power of four. So if you put this into a calculator, it becomes uh, 6.733 by 10 to the negative eight approximately. And the units for J are gonna be meters to the fourth, okay? So we've now got all the information that we require to fill out our uh, maximum shear stress equation, okay? So I'm just gonna substitute in, I'll pop down here. So we needed the maximum uh, torque, and we already decided that that was 90. And then the next thing we needed was the maximum radius, which we've got is 20 millimeters. So I'm gonna convert this to meters, which means times by 10 to the negative three. And then on the bottom line was J, which we've just worked out. And this is already in base units. So since everything is in base units, I should get an answer out in Pascals. And if you pop this in a calculator, it comes to about 2.673 by 10 to the power of seven. So obviously this is quite a big number, so you probably want to convert it to megapascals, which just means dividing by 10 to the 6. So if you do that, you end up with 26.73 uh, in megapascals for your answer. So that's all there is in terms of this video, and I'll see you in another one.